Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Sunday Messages. And if you don't know, I moved this week, and so I am doing an audio-only version of the podcast today. I'll figure out the video version at some point soon, but for now, we're just going to stick with the audio version. So let's go ahead and open up with a blessing, shall we? I am in full agreement for life to feel easy. I'm in full agreement for all of you to make the connection between your satisfaction and the ease of your life. I'm in full agreement for you to feel a sense of peace and confidence as you move into the right next steps. I'm in full agreement for you to trust the steps that you are guided to and to not judge them, to just be in total acceptance of what you know in your bones is right for you, even if your brain is not fully wrapping itself around your next steps. I'm in full agreement for things to feel natural this week, for everything to flow, for it to feel smooth, for you to drop out of the mental body and really into trusting your soul. Full agreement for all of that. The other thing that I want to mention is that this week, the Astral Playground session is whole lot of money. So I am very excited about this week's Astral Playground because we are just going to get into the money vibe, feeling the money, being in the experience of money, holding the money, having the money, flowing the money, receiving the money, just being in the money vibe. My intention is for everyone who's in Astral Playground or who listens to that session at any point in time is so freaking magnetic for money that they, they are just roaming around planet Earth and money is just flowing into their life in quantities that they could previously not imagine. And my intention is also for that astral playground session to be valued at millions of dollars. Like I really desire the results of that to be so mind-blowing and so out of this world that people will tell the tale of this astral playground for years to come. That's the intention. That's the energy. Just so you know what I'm going into the session with, it's going to be a really big deal. It is so much fun. This is a great time to get in. You know what? Let me take that back. Every day is a good day to get into Astral Playground because it's that freaking good, and I'm just really excited about it. So hopefully I will see you inside, and yeah, that's what we have going on in Astral Playground this week. And as always, if you're interested, the link will be in the description box or the show notes. It's Astral Playground if you go to the homepage of my website. And I should also mention that as soon as you get into Astral Playground, you get instant access to all of the previous sessions that we've done. So there you have it, my friends. If you want to see some of the results that people have been getting from Astral Playground, just go check out the homepage. I posted some of the testimonials that I've received. They're crazy. They really are out of this world. So go check those out. They warm my heart. They delight me. Just just go look. Go look. It's so good. Okay, so I have a prayer request. This one's anonymous. It says, I'm nearing the finale of my pregnancy. Please pray that I have a smooth, positive, easy, and healthy labor and delivery. Any affirmations or advice on perspectives of this experience are welcome. So yes, of course, full agreement for everything to be smooth and easy, for it to be a positive, enriching experience in your life. I'm in full agreement for you to go into your delivery experience with confidence and really allowing, I'm, I'm getting like ancestors to help you. Like really think about how long this has been going on and how many generations and how many women have come before you in this experience. And so I'm in full agreement for you to feel the power of the collective consciousness, the collective energy around positive birth experiences. I'm in full agreement for you to tap into that. Now, in terms of advice, the one thing that I would give you here is just go as general as possible. So instead of making it about like wrestling with the specifics of this experience, I would just go into it with this 
everything is working out for me. Everything is going to be okay. Like really general soothing statements are going to be really supportive. If you happen to have a doula or any type of advocate or anything like that, just give yourself permission to ask any questions that you might have coming up or If there's anything that is making you nervous, make sure you only ask someone who you deeply, deeply trust and who is familiar with all of this. Don't just go asking the whole town. Just speak to someone that you really um, trust their perspective and information. Okay. And then we have an advice column around this as well. And here is what it says. My question is around the topic of peer pressure. My lifestyle is straight edge. I choose not to drink, use drugs, smoke, etc. These choices feel natural for me and come from me, not external influences such as religion or anything like that. I also don't judge anyone for choosing to participate in other ways of life. Other people's choices aren't my business and I only care about my own body, not anyone else's. Since I became pregnant, there's been so much peer pressure and influence around getting an epidural and medicated birth. I knew it was a thing, but for me, it never felt like something I was attracted to. When someone asks me, both in the medical field and other women, I say no, that I'm not planning an epidural. There's this defensiveness from them, like they're being judged, or phrases like, well, plans change, or well, I got one, well, more power to you, sarcastically speaking. My doctor is very pro-epidural and continues to say, well, it really hurts and I don't want you to feel like a failure if you get one. Now it's like it's in my head, but not as something I want to do or feel comfortable with. It feels more like peer pressure and this gross influential vibe. So the first thing, I feel like a lot of people already know what I'm going to say, but my recommendation is that you never, ever, ever, ever discuss something that's really important to you that's sensitive with random people. And this is something that comes up all of the time with people is when someone is asking you a question, even if it's inappropriate, even if it's rude, even if it's something that you're really sensitive about and you don't want to discuss, for whatever reason, people feel pressure to respond and actually divulge personal information. And I want to give everyone who's listening to this podcast permission to say no. I know this is a radical idea. You do not need to be talking to random people about sensitive things. And when it comes to medical experiences, medical procedures, medical information, that is nobody's business. Quite frankly, I don't care if it's normal for people to ask these types of questions. If you're pregnant, personally, I think it's rude. So my recommendation is stop talking. Stop talking to people about this. Do not discuss your medical plans with strangers or people who you're not really close to. If you want to talk to your best friend about it or someone that you deeply trust and that whose perspective you really um, care about and appreciate, speak to those people privately. These are not the types of discussions that anyone should be able to chime in about. And what I want to make really normal for everyone in my audience is how to tell people to fuck off. I do not care if this is controversial. I think we need a little more of this because people are getting a little too cozy asking questions that are not okay. So in practice, how this might look is, let's say someone comes up to you and they ask you a question that you don't want to answer. You just say, no, thank you. I'm not available to talk about that with you. If that feels too strong, you can simply say, can we talk about something else? Another one would be, that's a pretty invasive question. Another one would be, I only discuss that with my doctor. Another one is, I don't want to discuss this right now. I promise you there are a million ways to say no, and so many people who are listening to this really need to get good at saying no. And I would also say, you need to be really clear about what you are sensitive about. Because if you're sensitive about something, 
or you're having a lot of mixed energy or a lot of anxiety about something or it's an unknown experience, do not give people the opportunity to plant seeds in your mind. Don't let them. Don't let them tell you their traumatic stories. And the way that you prevent this from happening is by getting good at saying no or not allowing the door to that conversation to open at all. And I find if you simply confront someone and say, that's a rude question, don't ask things like that, they're not going to fuck with you. They're not going to try to push beyond that boundary. Now, the, the thing is, you have to be willing to upset others. If someone is willing to ask you an invasive, rude question, then surely you can get behind setting a boundary. Surely you can get behind saying no. Tell people no. Like, understand you do not have to participate in any conversation that you do not want to. Really. Now, of course, let me be clear. This does not apply to, like, your doctor wanting to know about your birth plan. Right? That's some. That's someone who does need to be in on your desires, your preferences, you know, someone who's involved in the process. Or, like, if your best friend asks you or your mom asks you, as, assuming you have a good relationship with your mom, right? Like those close intimate relationships where people already have that level of intimacy with you, that's completely different. But people on the street, friends you're not that close to, uh, coworkers, stuff like that, people really are out here having the audacity to ask shitty questions. And so you need to check these people. Don't let them get into your head by stopping the conversation ahead of time. So how I would approach it now, now that you've already had these conversations and the seeds have already been planted, go reconnect with what you want. So your core desire is, I want to have an unmedicated birth. Rad. Get behind it. Just know you get to want what you want. You get to experience what you want to experience. And... Just trust that. Trust your desires. Trust the unfolding. Trust the whole process and trust what you want. It's like, I know you already know that epidurals are available. Duh. Everyone knows that. So when when someone is creating a birth plan, it's like, these are my preferences. This is the absolute ideal situation that I would want to have. And there's an understanding that of course, sometimes things need to be modified, but this is a matter of preferences. This is a matter of my ideal world, my ideal situation. This is what would unfold. Now, when it comes to your doctor, I I kind of want to give her the benefit of the doubt just a smidge, just a little bit, because I understand what she's saying about putting so much pressure on ideal situations that people beat themselves up. I, I get what she's talking about. But I also understand that doctors uh, also need to be checked. Sometimes doctors do need to be put in their place. And so if you're experiencing a pushy doctor, I'm not sure if that's what you're experiencing, but if you are dealing with a pushy doctor, this is what I would say. I'm aware that epidurals are available. My current plan is to have an unmedicated birth, and that's what I'm sticking to. If I change my mind and I decide to get an epidural, you will be the first person to know. Now, if I'm beating myself up and I have emotional distress after the fact, I will go ahead and hire a therapist, but that's not your job. You let me go ahead and take care of my emotional well-being, and you go ahead and hold space and support me through the birth process and honor my wishes accordingly. That's it. And if if you're noticing it's coming up more often, you can say firmly, I'm not talking about this with you again. I've already expressed my preferences. Unmedicated, if my mind changes, I will let you know. Do not ask me again. Period. If I decide to get an epidural, I will communicate that. I do not want to be asked again. What I know to be true is that pushy people can only be pushy with people who don't lay down the law. So if you want to command authority in these spaces, because remember, doctors are here to serve you. You are the boss. 
Doctors are not the boss. They make emergency decisions, right? They have some authority in the case of an emergency. That's that's why you want a doctor. But when it comes to your care, your health care, that is your that that's all you. You're the boss of that. So just just make sure that you let these fucking people know their proper position. You let them know you're the boss and that's it. That's final. The final piece that I want to give you here is don't like like don't resist the idea of the epidural in the sense of don't be afraid. Don't be like, oh no, I'm I'm thinking about it or they planted seeds. Now what if it happens? Don't do that. That's not gonna help. Just relax, soften your thoughts around it. Just let it kind of be in this um shift into owning your desire and holding this surrendered position of I'm trusting my soul with this. I'm trusting the most divine experience possible for me. And I trust my desires. I trust my focus. I trust what I want. And I'm just reconnecting to that. So people get really tripped up. Like when they're thinking about something they don't want, they want to like fight against it and wrestle it. You don't need to do that. Just chill, breathe, everything's going to be okay, like soothe yourself. So you don't need to get into a lot of fighting against or resistance around this. It's more about put extra um, emphasis on your desire and relax around the unwanted. And that's where you can really get into that sweet spot. Okay, here is the next advice column that we have. I'm kind of going to skim through this um, just to just to speed things up. I graduated last year and now I need to find my own way in the world. Now I'm so deep in this spiritual path that everything worldly in 3D seems dumbed down and silly to me. I care about making the world a better place and my desired job would be social research, sustainability, or something along those lines. But I can't get on board with anything that doesn't incorporate the spiritual and energetic. While I want to work, uh, I want work experience and would love a successful career, I don't see the traditional route aligning to me or satisfying me. After university, I went traveling with savings I had. It was the most aligned decision I've ever made, but now I'm home, staying with family, and I'm $2,000 in debt trying to get a silly little muggle job. I don't see any tangible possibilities of making money for my spiritual pursuits right now. I do, however, feel totally aligned, at peace, and content sitting in the void, manifesting my new life. It all feels like it's resting on getting a job so I can get some money and get moving, but my job search just seems futile. The energetic side all comes so easily for me, but humaning has never been natural. And at this point in my life, I don't really have the skills or experience to make it on my own. While it feels challenging to maneuver through this part, I feel excited and expansive in regards to wherever I'm heading. Seeing as I have you to blame for helping me (laughs) develop such a seasoned energetic practice, it makes sense to seek your advice. Love you and can't wait to hear your wisdom that you've got for me. Okay, so what I will say is there are not two camps. There's not like the spiritual camp and the muggle camp. Spiritual and muggle are perspectives. So it's not fair to break everything up into this binary way of thinking where you have there's muggle jobs and then there's magical jobs. That's that's incorrect because I could make a case. I could make every single job spiritual, literally. I could make the most left brain, like engineering jobs, I could put a spiritual spin on. And that's where your perspective will help you with all of this. You can have a magical perspective and project that onto any career path. So you're getting too tangled up in thinking about things as spiritual or not spiritual, and that's just not how it works. You can carry spiritual practice into anything, anything. I would also add, don't put spiritual work on a pedestal. Like, it's it's really not that serious. It's not that deep. 
And don't get me wrong. I understand that there's a lot of people out here acting like you're going to reach enlightenment sitting in lotus pose on a mountaintop. I understand that there's a lot of uptight people um, when it comes to spiritual work. I'm just never going to advocate for that. I am going to advocate for your pleasure, your satisfaction, and the next point of expansion. And so instead of looking at it like, I need a very highbrow spiritual job, all of these muggle things are just so boring to me. It's like, it doesn't need to be like that. You're going to isolate yourself from all of the goods that life is having to offer you. Because the thing is, Anything can feel magical. The The universe has infinite ways to bring satisfa- uh, satisfying things to you, but you have to be in the energy of satisfaction in order for those things to reveal themselves to you. So instead of looking at it in that binary way of spiritual and non-spiritual, look at it in terms of, is this pleasurable or not? Because that is going to help your path light up Um, If you're thinking about it from what's going to save the world, that's not necessarily going to be sustainable if you're not enjoying it. So sustainability comes from pleasure. Pleasure will keep you fueled for an entire lifetime. And so if you can just keep your eyes peeled for the most pleasurable job, loosen up on the stuffiness around uh, saving the world and being of service, and while There's obviously good intentions behind that. What I will say is it's not going to be sustainable if you're not factoring in satisfaction. Don't aim at spirituality, aim at satisfaction, and then that will be sustainable over time. So spiritual practice is just one facet of your life. It's not something that is going to necessarily... Uh, be the the basis of everything because you're in human form. So trying to reject your humanity isn't going to work because I can guarantee you, do you still enjoy eating food? Well, that's a human experience. Do you still enjoy walking around in the sunshine? That's a human experience. So you can't detangle the two. You chose to embody. You chose to exist in human form. Right, you chose that. This isn't something that you're that you need to reject. And so it's about synthesizing the two, and that's why I'm bringing you back to satisfaction. Keep the muggle versus spiritual out of it for a second. That way you can actually see what would be the most pleasurable for you. And that is going to make this a lot clearer and easier. Because the other thing is if you try to constantly hold this perspective of, I need the most spiritual thing. Well, you're going to cap out on what you can experience because it's an it's a black hole. It's never ending. You, you'll you constantly be chasing like the more spiritual thing. And eventually it's, you're just going to realize that it's, it, you're going to end up being insatiable because it's a black hole. There's never going to be enough. So just allow um, enjoyment, pleasure, and satisfaction to be the sustainability thread that carries you throughout your jobs. So don't look for a spiritual job. Look for a satisfying job. Look for something that's fun. Look for something that is going to bring you pleasure. And the service and all of those elements, of course, that's going to naturally be incorporated. You will be led to those things, but you don't have to force that. So just loosen your grip. Allow more spaciousness around how the path unfolds. And that's going to make it a lot faster and easier for you. All right, my friends, let's pull some tarot. Let's see what's going on this week. Okay, first we have five of coins. This is doubt, fear, contraction, like really facing the negative thoughts so that you can transform them. This week, I'm getting, it's about finding a new perspective and shifting what you're focused on. And then I have Page of Cups. Let yourself be surprised and delighted. And let yourself have a perspective that is really with fresh eyes. Like if you could 
blindly trust your desires, if you could just know that everything that you desire gets to come to you, how would you feel, right? So let yourself trust it. And then we have the Page of Swords. So there's a lot of like fresh perspective, a different way of thinking, a different way of perceiving, moving forward with things that feel really good to you, knowing your desires are correct, allowing yourself to understand that doubt and fear and that contraction is simply an indication that you're telling stories that really do not feel good and you're entertaining perspectives that really don't feel good. And if you can just allow yourself to put on a new pair of glasses, just like a fresh set of eyes that is going to make a world of difference. So I'm really getting this is about making it a practice, meaning don't put pressure on yourself to get it right immediately. It's just trying something on. This is another thing that I hear from people about practicing a new perspective. Sometimes people will say, well, it feels inauthentic, but at the same time, it's new. Like if you're trying a new perspective on or a new way of thinking, a new way of being, there's a very real possibility that that it could feel um, like a new pair of shoes, like you're trying to break it in. So don't put pressure on yourself to be in full mastery this week. This is about experimenting with new perspectives, ideas, ways of thinking, ways of being, ways of approaching things, and that is going to make this a lot smoother. So that is all that I have for you today, everyone. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you all. Don't forget, if you want to get into Astral Playground, we are having a blast in there. Go check it out. And of course, all of my classes, all of the other stuff that I have available to you is in the description box. Go check it out. And I will talk to you all next time. Have a good one, everybody. Bye-bye.